You're listening to Good Morning Gwinnett, a division of ABK Media Group, hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney, sharing stories about people and places around beautiful Gwinnett County every day at 9 a.m. Southern living at its best. Good morning, good morning, good morning, all my Gwinnettes out there in Gwinnett land and all of you around the world listening to the sound of my voice. It's a beautiful day here in Gwinnett, a beautiful fall right now. It's 46 degrees, going up to a high about 59 with a chance of some showers today. So, yeah, but it's still beautiful. It's beautiful and crisp, right? Get outside, get you a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, sit on the deck, just be one with nature for a minute. Yes, yes, I love it. I love it. So glad to be with you this morning. Had a busy day. Yes, got a busy day. Always got a busy day. Just just loving every minute of what I do. So just happy to be with you this morning. Today is November the 19th. Do you Can you believe that? I mean, time is flying. This time next week, the grocery stores will be full of people buying the last minute Thanksgiving dinner meals. What you What are you guys doing for Thanksgiving? We have we're having family over. Like we love holidays in my house. Like we celebrate all. Holidays. I think the only holiday, well, we celebrate all holidays. Like we celebrate Memorial Day. Memorial Day usually falls around my mother's birthday every year. My birthday is somewhere right in there. Um, Memorial Day we cook out. Fourth of July we cook out. Labor Day, Labor Day is one of those ones. Eh, we may we may not. I mean, have company over. We always cook out because my husband likes to cook. Um, but it's always something going on every holiday now the fourth of july memorial day those are big holidays for us and christmas and thanksgivings are even bigger um my uncle loves my uncle lives with me he loves halloween so he goes out and buy all of this candy every year but the crazy thing is there are not a lot of kids that trick-or-treat now which is crazy like when i was in jersey man trick-or-treat started two days early and it lasts two days after the halloween like kids are everywhere getting candy not down here. Like, it's a little weird. Like, people don't let their kids go trick And I know where I with their kids because I see them. But all the kids come out. But my uncle loves that holiday. And um, he goes out. He has all of his candy. He sits in the garage. And he waits for the kids to come. And a few come. But for all the candy that he buys, they're not enough. But Christmas and, and Thanksgiving, those are my, my, my fun days. Like, my husband, I think Memorial Day and, and, and Fourth of July season. Because he loved to cook on the grill. He is, he's a master. Um... And I like I like to go and give. So I'm a giver. So that's why Thanksgiving and Christmas are like my best. But anyway, let's get on to some horoscopes brought to you by Noted the Strouds and Mike Eisen. Today is Wednesday, Tuesday, November the 19th. I'm, I'm trying to skip a day, right? I'm trying to skip a day. Tomorrow is Wednesday. We having a we having our first podcast posse meetup. So if you are a podcaster, interested in becoming a podcaster, interested in learning how to leverage podcasting, join us tomorrow at 6.30 at the Cornerstone Coworking Space located at 279 West Krogan Street in Lawrenceville, Georgia. We're going to be having our first podcast meetup, and I'm excited about that because um, – <clears throat> I understand that this is a great industry, and I'm telling you, anybody who has a message, who has a story, who just want to get some stuff off their chest, this is a great way to do it. And I, I get up every morning, four days a week, and I talk to you guys, but I also go out and teach people how to do this thing. I also go out and tell people why it's such a great platform and how they can get on it. So join us tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. at the Cornerstone Coworking Space for the first podcast posse meetup. It's free to attend. All, only thing we ask is that you bring a non-perishable item so we can do a donation um, over the holiday season next week. So, all right, let's get on to the horoscopes. Watch about Noted Astrology, Michael Thyssen. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to kick it off with what we kick it off with every week, Aries, every day. Aries, your competitive nature will enable you to win any contest you enter. You have to know what your boss wants if you expect to do your job correctly. Your your boss won't be too thrilled if you leave things unfinished. And the only way to know what somebody wants is to ask them. Ask them. If you don't know what your boss wants, Aries, just go and ask them. Like, listen, hey, what do you need? What, What do I need to do to get this job done? Don't try to guess. All right, Taurus, dream a little today. Chronic health problems are likely to serve it if you are keeping your problems locked up inside. You'll find your detail your your detail oriented today. Here's the thing, Taurus. 
Sometimes you have to find an outlet for the problems. Otherwise, they will eat away at you like a bad disease. That's where stress come in. As a matter of fact, that's where disease comes from, stress and problems that we keep locked up inside. Let that junk out. Let that junk go. Don't don't develop chronic problems because you're letting it all, keeping it all in. Go outside and just hit, listen, if you don't have anybody to talk to, go outside and talk to God. He's always listening. Speak to the universe. The universe is always listening. Just get it off your chest. Get it out your system. You don't want to have chronic health problems. I see people with chronic health problems. It's not nice. I'm sure you know some people with chronic health health problems. Gemini, you can come up with future trends and creative fields. You should be getting into self-improvement projects. Verbal verbal abuse could lead to carelessness. I don't know what who's doing the verbal abusing. Hope it's not you, Gemini, but if you are, stop. And if it's not you and someone's doing it to you, put a stop to it. Don't let it don't let it mess you up. Work on some self-improvement projects anyway. Because when you when you work on yourself, verbal abuse is a no-no. It's only when we're weak in ourselves that we allow things to happen to us like that. Some things are out of our control, but most things aren't. So work on yourself and don't let anybody verbally abuse you, Gemini. Cancer. You can make money if you concentrate on producing services of good that will make domestic chores easier. Work quietly behind the scenes. You need to be around friends and family. Listen, anytime you can make people's lives better, easier, more productive, you probably got something there. So if you're going to produce something today, Cancer, make sure it's going to be something that's going to help somebody domestically or otherwise. I'm just saying that's because that's people buy for what they need, you know, what they think they need anyway. If it's going to make your life better, you go, let me go buy that. We always do that. Leo, you may have difficulties finish, finishing projects you start. You would have to check your cash flow before you decide to indulge in hobbies or entertainment that may be, be beyond your budget. Financial limitations are likely if you take risks. Here's the thing. Try not to do things beyond your budget. You know, there are things that you can go do and have a great time that won't put you on a financial strain. Have some control, Leo. If it's not in the budget, then don't do it. That's all I'm saying. Like, I remember when my daughter was little and I first started my first business. So I quit my job. I think I told you guys that yesterday. Don't do that. <laughs> do not do not do that. I quit my job with no money, no savings, no nothing. Just a great idea. That's all I had. And I was crazy. <clears throat> and I, t- I would tell anybody, don't do that. But I remember having my daughter. My daughter was at, she's about eight years, she was about seven at the time when I, when I stopped my job. She might have been eight. She might have been eight. And um, I remember quitting my job. And I remember not having money to do anything because every penny that I did get went into the business. But here's what I did. I found every free fun thing that my daughter and I could do. And she had a wonderful two years because everything that was free and fun, we did it. And when I did get a few, a few extra dollars, guess what we did? We went to the $2 Tuesday movies at, uh, down in Newark, $2 Tuesday movie. She was able to get popcorns and see movies. We did that pretty much the whole one whole summer. Like we would go to two dollar Tuesday and just get her some popcorn and we would sit there and watch movies. So you can you have to find a way. You know, there's a way to have fun. You don't have to spend a lot of money all the time. You just gotta be a little creative. That's all. Just be a little creative. Don't put yourself in risk in, in, in a bind like that, trying to, you know, entertain and do all this crazy stuff. Go to the park. We went to free museums, we went to parks, we did everything free. But she had a lot of fun. You know, so that's a good thing. All right, Virgo. Frustrations and limitations could cause anxiety. Be aware of any emotional deception. Do not sign legal contracts or documents today. Let me say that again, Virgo. Do not sign legal contracts or documents today. Do not get involved in joint financial ventures today. You got a a lot of do nots in there, Virgo. So do not ignore these messages. Do not. You know, and they don't sign contracts. If you don't, especially if you don't understand them. The worst thing in the world to do is sign a contract you understand, and then you caught up in some crap you can't really get out of. All right, listen, I'm going to a song. I'll be right back after this song to give you more of the horoscopes brought to you by noted astrologer Micah Thyssen. You're listening to the Good Morning with Net Show. <laughs> Where are you? What's up? 
what's going on. Simple truth, I don't know. Let's get it on. Touching the stars, touching the stars. And we're gonna pick it up with Libra. Libra, you may find that purchases or entertainment could be expensive. Stick to doing things that will pay that will make you a better person, both physically and mentally. You will enjoy the interaction with youngsters and take great pride in the projects you've completed. Listen, another person, don't go out today purchasing entertainment that's gonna be expensive. Libra, I mean it's a money day, right? <clears throat> Everything is about money, seems like. Just find some free stuff to do. Take the kids. Today is Tuesday. See if they got a $2 Tuesday in your, in your where you live at. You want to do some entertainment? Take them to Tuesday. Get some free popcorn, $2 popcorn, all this. Spend $5 a child. Because right now, you know, I'm just saying, when I go to the movies on a regular day, it's $14 to get in the movies. 
and then probably another fourteen dollars if I want to eat something. That and that's like popcorn. Not even that's not like a food. Like if I want to eat a meal, that meal is probably seventeen dollars. Especially if I go to the to the one by, by my house, which I love to go to because it's a dining theater. Man, you can easily come out there and spend thirty dollars a person easily. And don't we have they have a, a a bar. So if you want to lounge around, you can. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful movies. Um, but if you want to come out and lounge around, and you want a beer and all that kind of stuff, all of that, you can spend a lot of money. All right, Scorpio, you can make money if you work on personal investments. You can help sort out problems that friends are facing. Your sensitivity towards those you love will capture their hearts. Oh, that's nice. That's so nice. That's beautiful. That's nice. Anyway, you can make money from personal investments, so it's a money day for you. All right? Sagittarius, don't be afraid to speak in defense of others. Try not to donate to organizations if you can hardly afford to take care of yourself. Ooh, you need to spend extra time sorting through your work. Listen, Sagittarius, you, you know you be on that when you already go somewhere, you, you already get on the airplane, and they tell you, put the oxygen mask on yourself first so you can get some oxygen, then put the oxygen mask on other folks. Listen, don't make, don't try to make donate. I know you got a good heart, you want to donate. But if you're going to donate and it's going to be detrimental to yourself, don't do that. God knows you. God knows your heart. God knows my heart. He does. He knows your heart. All right? All right. Capricorn, put your energy into home renovations. Be careful disclosing information. You may overspend if you travel today. However, the trip will be one to remember. Ooh, I know you want that experience. You want that one to remember trip, right? However, you may overspend. Just be careful. I'm just saying. Aquarius, don't jump into investments too quick. I'm telling you, every, everything is about money today. Cautious. Caution. Caution about money. Aquarius, don't jump into investments too quickly. Take a trip to, to just, or just spend some quality time with your mate. Opportunities will come through long-term investments. Ooh, that means it's a money day. Listen, spend some time with your loved one. Don't jump into investments too quickly. Take a look at them. Have someone that's an expert take a look at them. Just don't do it by yourself today, especially not today. All right? And my fellow fish Pisces, be prepared for an active but rewarding day. Mm. You may have been trying to do too much. <laughs> you ain't never lie, uh, stars. Leaving yourself exhausted and open to colds and infections, you are best to concentrate on your professional endeavors. Let me tell you something. I have I have been doing too much. And I'm telling you, just just thinking about, and I think I talked about this yesterday, just going into, th- thinking about going into 2020, I have been cleaning my plate, cleaning my business, and really nailing down um, things so I don't have to do too much. Leaving myself exhausted. I had I've had two colds this year. I never get colds. I've had two two colds. Um, feel like I have carpal tunnel in my left hand, which I'm like, okay, how did I get that? Guess what though? The the pain that I feel is the way I hold my cell phone. So I realize I hold my cell phone in my left hand and right what right where the pain is 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 the exact position I hold my phone. Cause you know, most of the time they say you get carpal tunnel from like typing and all the it's from, I'm almost positive. It's from the way I hold my phone with my left hand. Cause I'm right handed, but my left hand and I have this pain and you know, it's because you be trying to do too much. So don't try to do too much day fish, you know, stop trying to do too much, leaving yourself exhausted and open to being sick, you know, and, I, and I'm doing it. I'm working on that. It's hard. I know, I know, I know, I know it's hard. Listen, to all the horoscopes I got for you today. I will be back tomorrow to bring you more of the horoscopes brought to you by Nodal Astrology, Micah Thyssen. But right now, let's get on to some news you can use. You know, there was a stabbing um, day before yesterday on Sunday at the at the Kroger in Grayson. And the, the young guy stabbed his supervisor. And I feel so bad for both of them because now he has probably pretty much ruined his life. And I'm sure she's probably going to have PTSD forever. You know, I'm sure she's probably going to want to leave the job. I pray that she's okay. I don't know what was said, how it went down, because I didn't read the full story. But I did see and hear that he was 21 years old and she was 59. She was his supervisor. He stabbed her. So apparently they must have got into some type of altercation and he just went berserk. So, I mean, you you have to be so careful. You just got to be like you. You could be just, it's, I'm, okay, I'm not going to talk about that. 
just, just pray. How about this? How about we all just come together around the world? You listen to the sound of my voice. I'm going to take 30 seconds and we're going to all pray. We're going to pray for peace and well-being across the globe. 30 seconds. Thank you. So that was a 30 second prayer um, because we're just living in some treacherous times right now, like just treacherous. And so I just wanted to take that 30 seconds for us to pray across the globe. So if you listen to the sound of my voice, I hope you participate in that 30 second of prayer. Well, whoever you pray to, just pray to him because we need it. Whoever your God is, we need prayer around the globe because people are just out there, just out there losing it for no reason. 21, 12, 16, 89, 79, they're just, they're just losing. It's not funny, but man, you know, and I know when I think about these things, I know part of it is biblical because in Revelation it says, we're going to go through some stuff and boy, are we going through some stuff. Anyway, let's get on to some news you can use. I don't want to get off on my soapbox this morning about that either. So there are, you know, there are some Republicans here. They running for that seat. The seventh, um, the seventh congressional district is, Ooh, it's like eight of them. They want, the, that's the Republicans. They want that seat. And here's what they say. They say impeachment is bad. They said, but border wall, absolutely. All right, I'm just, listen, I have to report on all the news. This is the first time I haven't seen anything really about Republicans. Like everything I see is about Democrats. So that's what I report about. But um, eight Republicans vying, for, vying to be the party's um, 2020 nominee for the 7th Congressional District crammed into Gwinnett GOP headquarters for a forum last night. And perhaps predictably, there was plenty of agreement among them, which I just said, impeachment, bad, border wall, good. Now, right, that's, the, that's what the Republicans are saying. Medicare for all, no way. Okay, so that's what they're saying. They're saying no Medicaid for all, put up the border wall, and don't imp- and don't impeach the president. But the starkest consensus was ab- uh, about just how much this seat, which is being vacated by a Republican U.S. Rep. Rob, Rob Woodall, after the narrowest victory in 2018. Because, listen, he ran against Carol- Carolyn Bardot, and he almost lost. 400 votes separated them. Yeah, so they're saying we cannot lose this seat. They want they they're fighting for it. I'm sure Carolyn is coming back. She 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 lost by just over 400 votes. So that was a very close race. Yeah. So Rob announced in, you know in February that he wasn't going to re- seek re-election this year. Um, Renee Unterman is one of the ones who have you know want to be part of this one seat amongst others. Uh, I interviewed Lisa Babbage earlier this year. I lost the interview, y'all. It was a really good interview. But she's going for the seat as well. It was real, so that was um, one of my errors. You know, I'm thinking I know it all. I'm excited about doing the interview and and interview her for an hour and twenty minutes and lost every hour and twenty minutes of it, except for the music. The only thing recorded was the music. I could have just cried. But anyway, she did come out to 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 do, and she said she would come out again to do the um to actually do the um the, the interview over. I like that. See, I'm, but I'm not excited now about it because. She knew me, I know her, and so it won't be the same. When I when first interviewed her, I didn't know her, she didn't know me. And um I thought it was a really good interview because it was authentic. It was not I don't I don't do questions. So now she knows what I'm gonna ask her. So I don't know. I don't know if I want her back. But anyway, she was a great interview. Sorry you guys missed it. Um so some of the candidates are running um included Lee, Lisa Batch, uh, Mark Gonzalez, Lynn Hemrick, Rob McCormick. Joe Prophet, I met Joe earlier this year too. He, so the first thing he said to me, he's African American, and the first thing he said to me when I met him, we were at a meeting. He said Republican. And I was like, okay, like what? What am I supposed to say to that? You're a Republican. I guess he felt like I should know that. So and I'm so he told me that. First, how you doing? I'm Joe Prophet. I'm a Republican. Hey, how you doing, Joe? Nice to meet you. So that's all I can say. It was hilarious. We were in a business meeting at a TV station, and um. Yeah, that was funny. But anyway, ja- um, Jacqueline T- Singh and, yeah, so those are all the people right now who are Republican, who are running, who wants that seat that uh, Rob Woodall is about to give up in, in, in 2020 now. 
some, some Republicans, some Democrats out there too. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be a race. I'm telling you. I'm t- I'm expecting next year. I'm expecting just a lot. I, I have. I think. I think I'm gonna. I feel like I'm going to cover a lot of politics. Like I've been doing a lot of interviews with politicians this year, but I feel like I'm going to be covering even more between the, the, um, county races, the state races and the, and the, and the, and the country race, the U S race. I feel like it's going to be a lot of politics going on. So I might have to do a separate show just on Sundays about what's going on, um, around the, around the world with politics, you know? So you never know. We'll we'll see. We'll see as time go on. Anyway, so this year coming up, who's running against uh, all these people, all the Republicans? Cal Lombardo. We, we figured that. Um, Zahar. Karen, Karen Shank. Brenda Lopez. John Eves. And the Bill of Islam. So we got, listen, it's going down in 2020. You hear me? 2020, it is going down. Everybody want to be in leadership. And we need good leaders. Here, here, we need good leaders. We don't just need leaders. We need some good. We need great leaders. All right, All right listen. I'm gonna go to a song, and I'm gonna be back right after this song to give you more of the rundown about what's going on in and around Gwinnett County, right here on the Good Morning Gwinnett Show. I'm looking outside my window. I try to see where my luck goes. I just don't know how it slips out There must be some kind of plan Every person could be you though A pretty guy with a halo But who am I kidding please now I gotta realize that you to the Good Morning Gwinnett Show. It's your girl, Orgy Brown Kearney, giving you the daily rundown of what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. So there was a a symposium or a panel discussion yesterday at Gwinnett, um, Georgia Gwinnett College, and it was talking about um, the Mexican perspective. And, you know, they want to open up the conversation. They need for Mexican to understand um, what's going on and how the United States feel about them. And they need us to understand, you know, we we, we need to understand how Mexicans feel about us. You know, a lot always talking about Mexican, Mexican, Mexicans. And I kind of think it's unfair um, because 
yeah, I know that there are some people that come into the country and they commit crimes, but when you prosecute everybody based on their nationality, their 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 race, I think that's not right. And so they had a conversation yesterday um, talking about this, and they said they need to keep the lines of communication open. This panel was a part of a, a grant that was given for $25,000, and I think it's a great thing because when you start to talk about things, you can get some clarity on some things. You know what I'm saying? You can get some clarity on something. Once you, if you sit around and, t- and here's the thing, there's just on some people we're not gonna be able to change their mind. No matter what you do, you're not gonna be able to change their mind, their views, anything. But that's only a few. So if we can get the the majority to understand and have the conversation. Things can get better. But that's where everybody has to come into play. Like that few that don't understand, that want to cast prejudice against others. It, I'm just more of us who don't than do. And I think when we start the conversation, it's a great thing. But that was an event that happened yesterday. And so, um, yeah, it was a grant through 100000 Strong in America's Innovation Fund. So that $25,000 funded that he was going to fund some students to go abroad to Mexico and Mexican students to come here in exchange. So I think that's a great thing. I started the conversation. It has to start somewhere. And, and that's it. Because, you know, we, we hear a lot of bad things about Mexico and, and Mexicans and, and the news and you know, I'm not saying the news is fake, but I'm saying it is one-sided sometimes. It is. It's one-sided. I'll tell you that from when you look at African-American communities. Like, you never see the good stuff. It's one-sided. You know? Is it fake? Some of it is. Is it one-sided? Yep. Like, you never see the good things that are happening in certain communities because of the people that live in the communities. I'm just saying. I'm just keeping it real. It's a one-sided thing. Even me, when I do my show, it's one side because I don't want to talk about bad news. And I, but I have the option. I don't want to talk about bad stuff, <laughs> right? It's everybody else is talking about it. Why do I need to talk about it? Sometimes I do make announcements, but it's just to spend like out. Like I watch the news, and I'm telling you, I hardly ever see one good thing on the news. You know what? So this is the main news I watch. I watch um seven o'clock, right? I do watch that, but that is by probably only news news and so he around the world he gets in he do america strong which i love like it's something great at the end but for the most part i look at the regular news like if i'm sitting up there talking to my mom it's like story after story after story after story all bad so i don't need to report that everybody else is doing that. let me probably point on some good stuff and i'm not a journalist i'm not saying i'm a journalist i'm a person with a podcast who loves the community that they live in, and I want to talk about the good things that's happening here and the things that are important to us here, All right? All right, keep it moving. Um, Gwinnett County Public Schools office first look at a site plan for the new secondary high school. Okay, we got another high school coming. Man, let me tell you something. The Beaufort High School that they built, $8 million. Oh, this is in Beaufort, too. Beaufort ain't playing no games. So Buford just built the high school, $85 million. They built on another one? They, they're not playing games. So Gwinnett County Public School System plans to open secondary high school in 2022, but the school system already has an idea of what the campus will look like um, thanks to site plan submitted by architecture design firm Smallwood. The school will be located at 3621 Sardis Church Road in Buford. Um, will be west of the athletics field and will also have an interest on West Rock Query Road, Fields um, including playing our football stadiums, practice field, baseball, and softball complexes, and four tennis courts. Child, that is going to be beautiful. The detention pond and another body of water on the site plan. The site of the school is close to Hamilton Mill Road uh, where it crosses over Interstate 85. So if you want to see that, you want to see the, the plan for that school, go check it out. I'm surprised they just put brand new. So, so that must that must mean that they definitely don't want overcrowded in high schools, and because they know that we're growing, like Gwinnett County is growing, so Buford must be growing well. They got new malls, they got new schools, so they are growing. So they doing what they got to do, and I'm not, I don't blame them. Do what you got to do, because you don't want overcrowded schools. Because when the kid, when the schools are overcrowded, the kids can't learn. You, they can't. It's it's overcrowded. So if you want more about that story, go to GwinnettDailyPost.com and you'll see the story there. But um, that's probably going to be beautiful. If it's anything like the $85 million school that they just opened this year, I'm, I I'm imagine it's going to be beautiful. $85 million, baby. They said the school was um, a beautiful. And I, $85 million. Yes. Education is important. Right. 
education is important, very important. And when we realize that, you know, we'll, we, we'll get behind it. All right. So Lawrenceville lawn getting new amphitheater, expanding parking. Okay. We're going to have our, listen, I love where I live. I do. I do. I love it. I love all of it. All right. As work continues on Lawrenceville South Lawn Project, city officials are preparing to simultaneously expand amenities at the neighboring Lawrenceville Lawn. The city approved a $1.5 million contract with Bain LLC to handle construction of a new amphitheater stage and expanding parking area. Construction is to be finished in mid-2020 with plans to hold a grand opening at next summer prelude to the 4th of July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The amphitheater will will be <clears throat> will kind of will kind of be a connection point, um, both in aesthetics as well as what we're looking for aspects of dynamic community engagement. Um, Lawrenceville uh, Director of Economic Development Lisa Sherman said, "Right, right, right, right. Yes, yes, yes. It will bring together the classic brick look." Um, the South Lawn that the South Lawn has developed, and with the, its design and build, as well as granite features that you see uh, today in Lawrenceville Lawn Park. Yes, yep, yep, yep. The city had already budgeted 1.8 million dollars earlier this year, but when the bids came in, they ended up lowering it, so it went for 1.5. So they saved three million dollars, three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, so that's gonna that's probably gonna be nice. You know, Grayson built theirs last year the amphitheater and um i was at uh duluth earlier this year in the summertime and they also have one so it's it only makes sense that lawrenceville had one too i know we're not jealous we just want to make sure you know everybody wants to make sure that their residents have all these and i i love it even if i left lawrenceville i can go to any one of those places and have a wonderful experience living swanee has a beautiful uh downtown area that's one Building nears up, Snell Bill is building nears up. I mean, you can go in and just have a beautiful work life, work life and play experience. The loot to test the valet parking service downtown. Oh, I don't know now. Valet parking downtown. I don't know about that one. Let me let me let me find out about this story because I don't know. <clears throat> at the hospital, at a restaurant, yeah, downtown. Is that gonna work out? So the Duluth City Council recently approved a proposal by the Downtown Development Authority to in- implement a trial valet service option for four consecutive Fridays and Saturdays. I'm interested to see how this is going to work out. A valet drop-off and pickup station will be placed in half round on West Lawrenceville Street, and a professional valet will be engaged to provide the service for four Fridays and evening, most season, most likely in January. Um... DDA will partner with restaurants and valet service to design incentives and pricing. I thought, maybe, well, maybe it would work, right? The co- total cost of the program is expected to be about five thousand dollars to run from four p.m. to midnight on Fridays and Saturday nights. More details about the program as the program takes shape. I think that may work. I mean, you don't have to worry about parking. Somebody's gonna park your car. Yeah, I mean, kind of like going to like. You know, they should have valet parking at the freaking airport. Let me let me go back. Y'all want to do some valet parking? It should be a valet parking thing at the airport. That, now, that would be great. Because here's the thing. You have to go and, oh, man, they think about that one. Shh. Don't tell anybody. I might have to figure out how to do that. Shh. So we're going to see how that, that's an experiment. They're rolling it out. We're going to see how that works out. All right, listen, I'm going to a song. I'll be right back after this next song um, to bring you more of what's going on. And you're listening to the Good Morning Gwinnett Show. Stay tuned. Took some time, but we pointed out. That tomorrow isn't here right now, baby An absent mind came to roam around Captured you in a foggy cloud, baby Standing on my toes on the edge, I'm ready to go See it clear when the shadows are lit, I'm ready to go
up and go, baby. The way they think is paradoxical. Captured you in a foggy cloud, baby. Standing on my toes on the edge, I'm ready to go. See it clear when the shadows are lit, I'm ready to go. with that show giving you news you can use around Gwinnett County all right so there is a um there's an event this evening at Collins Hill Branch Library Native American contributions to our country in Lawrenceville so this this, this should be interesting 6 30 this evening um you can go to 455 Camp Perrin Road in Lawrenceville um Native American contributions the Thanksgiving season brings new opportunities to appreciate Native American contributions to our nation's and culture from pumpkins and pineapples and, and maps and medicines ideas about liberty government environment to stewardship the native american imprint on our past is inescapable so if you want to know more about this and, and more about native americans and their countries here's the thing they were here first it ain't like they contributed to nothing they were here first we contributed to them and i think that's what we get it twisted at they were here first and of course folks came in and took over the land so, but we made contributions to the land. They were here already. It ain't like they came in later. Like, they brought us here. They brought us here, African Americans. We weren't here. Native Americans were here. So, we made contributions to the Native American lands, as did everybody else, because we all came here first after them. They were already here. Just saying. Got to keep it real. But if you want to know more about this, you want to learn more about Native American and war and peace um, from the Forgotten Patriot Allies in the American Revolution to the famous cold talkers of the First and Second World Wars, go out this evening, participate in this event. It's going to be at the Gwinnett County Public Library, Collins Hill Branch, located at 455 Camp Perrin Road, and that's in Lawrenceville. It's free and open to the public. If you got questions about this, you can call 770 770- Nine seven eight five one five four. <clears throat> Again, that number is not um seven seven zero. What did I say? Nine seven zero, seven seven zero nine seven eight five one five four. Or just go to Gwinnett PL, which stands for Public Library PL dot org. It's free, open to the public. Six thirty. Check it out. Yeah, we we weren't here first. Just so you know. Yep, I know some people would, would beg to differ, but I know we weren't here first. All right, there's a city council meeting this afternoon, this evening, um, in um, Swanee. If you want to attend that meeting, it's located at City Hall, and it's going to be at 6.30 to 7.30, 3.30 Town Center Avenue in Swanee, Center, uh, council meet, city council meeting, 6.30 to 7.30, City Hall, 3.30 Town Center Avenue, and that's in Swanee. So if you want to attend that meeting, by all means do so. It is free and open to the public as well. 
Go on out there. Find out what you got to do. Get your voice heard. You know, get the questions answered. All of that good stuff. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If you want to do that. You ain't got to do it. I'm just saying if you want to. Now, if you want to have a little fun tonight, they got they got a rock star bingo. <laughs> that sounds like fun, right? I know I talk about all serious stuff. It, it hasn't been a whole lot of events lately. Like, I don't know what's going on. Hey, there's an event tomorrow. Well, let me talk about Rockstar Bingo first. So, Rockstar Bingo, if you want to have some fun, you just want to relax, get you some food, get a drink, play some bingo, listen to some music, Rockstar Bingo tonight, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. You can really get it in. 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. It's going to be at the Parma Tavern, located at 3350 Buford Drive. That's building B, Suite 200 in Buford. You want to play some rock star, play, play a song. You identify the artist. They're going to play a song. You're going you to have to identify the artist and make them take off your bingo card and mark them off of your bingo card. It's called Musical Bingo, and they got prizes. So you got a chance to win some prizes, play some bingos, eat some food, have a couple of cocktails, have some fun. Yes, Rockstar Bingo, Parma Tavern, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m., 3350 Buford Drive, Building B, Suite 200, and that's in Buford, Georgia. If you got questions about this, you can call 678-541-0908, 678-541-0908. All right, listen. I told you earlier we have a we have a, just in case you missed the first part of the show, uh, and you join me live on this part of the sec this part of the show. There is a podcast meetup tomorrow. The podcast posse is going to be meeting up. So if you want to become a member of the podcast posse, it's free to be a member. But and this is for those who have podcasts, those who are thinking about starting a podcast, those who want to learn how to leverage podcasts because you don't have to. You don't have to start a podcast to be in the podcast industry. And yes, podcasting is an industry. It is a industry that is growing like wildfire. You know, you may be an editor in a, in the podcast um, industry. You may be a producer in the podcast industry. You may be a voiceover talent in the podcast industry. You may be a graphic designer in the podcast industry. There are There is a place for you in this industry. So you may just want to know how to get into the industry. I'm going to be speaking to a to a group of editors at Podfix next year in March about how to grow their business as editors in this industry. Now, I have no clue about editing, but I do know about growing a business. I do know about leverage, right? And so that's why they invited me to speak because I have leveraged some great relationships to do some things in my business that I'm proud of, but it's all because of leverage. And so I'll be talking about that at Podfix in March in Orlando, Florida, at the Marriott Resort. I'm excited about that for real. Um, but anyway, tomorrow, 6.30 to 6.30 to 8.30, we're going to be uh, getting together at the Cornerstone, located at 279 West Krogan Street in Lawrenceville at the Cornerstone Co-working Space. We're going to be getting together. We're going to have some refreshments. We're going to be talking podcasting for two hours. We're going to be meet and greet. I'm going to talk about how to get into this this game. All right, so come out and join us. It's a free event. Bring a non-perishable item. We're going to give that item away. Um, to We're going to make a donation to a shelter or someone who needs, you know, food for the holidays. So your admission is free, but you must bring a non-perishable item. Just go out of the grocery store and pick up something. Also, next Saturday, I'm super duper excited about this. Next Saturday, I am hosting Good Morning with Net is the host of the first Pop up small business Saturday. This I already know this is gonna be an annual event. I already know. Like I'm not good with events. Let me tell you this. I am not good with events, right? And I said to myself, okay, I need to host some events myself. So my first event is tomorrow, right? And my second event is next week. Uh podcast posse meetup is every month. That's gonna be every month. And the podcast um uh, Good Morning Gwinnett hosting Small Business Saturday. The pop-up is going to be every year. I already know that's going to be annual event. So that's my annual event every year. I hope to see that get bigger and bigger and bigger. This year is going to be at the Cornerstone. So if you want to come out and support our small businesses, we're going to be at the Cornerstone next Saturday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Come out, support the small businesses that are going to be there. These are small businesses who don't have brick-and-mortar stores. 
most of them. I think there's one, HelloFresh. I was so excited to see HelloFresh as a vendor. When that name popped, I was like, what? HelloFresh is going to be at our thing? I'm so excited about that. Um, but this is going to be... Um, this is going to be the first pop-up small Saturday here, um, in Gwinnett County. And I'm excited about that because it gives small businesses who don't have a storefront, the opportunity to come out and get their wares and services and, and, um, get exposure for their wares and services and products. So I'm happy to be sponsoring that event. Good morning, Gwinnett. I'm happy to be the sponsor on that. I know that's going to be an annual event. I'm expecting that event to grow to triple next year only because I just launched it, um, probably a month ago and it's already we already almost at capacity with our vendors already like i think we got seven spots left and maybe not 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 even that so i know it's going to grow next year and i'm super duper excited i will start marketing that part that project right now for next year and i'm sure it's going to be bigger so um because the cornerstone is nice but i don't think it's going to be able to hold all my vendors next year it will i'm already planning next year's event as already so Anyway, come out next Saturday. It's free to attend if you just want to come out and support. Um, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. is going to be at the Cornerstone Co-working Space located at 279 West Krogan Street in Lawrenceville, downtown Lawrenceville. It's right on the corner of Culver Street and Krogan. So when you come to that corner, the Cornerstone sits right on the corner, hence the name the Cornerstone. So come out, support the small businesses for Small Business Saturday. Um, Also, um... I got a lot of stuff going on. I got some trainings coming up in 2020. If you want to learn how to launch a podcast, I got two trainings coming up. One is going to be probably in February, and the other one is going to be in June. I'm going to be speaking at PodFest in March. I'm going to be speaking on a cruise ship about podcasting um, on a cruise to Belize in June. So I got a lot going on, man. I have a lot going on, for real. But all good stuff and all just educating people about this industry. So, listen, that's all I got for you. I'm going to go to this last song and then I'm going to come back and give you my quote of the day for some inspiration. Yes, I am. Stay tuned, people.
Welcome back to the Good Morning Gwinnett Show. I'm sorry, guys. I'm laughing because my brother just texted me something that was so funny. <laughs> he just texted me something that was so funny. He got tears in my eyes right now because he's so crazy. Whew, so forgive me. I am literally crying over here because what he I can't share it because it's funny. It's funny, but I can't share it. But, oh, my God. He had me, I'm sitting here texting him, man. He has me cracking up right now. And I got tears rolling down my eyes right now because I, it was so funny. But anyway, let's get on to the, <laughs> to the inspiration of the day. And, and so you need some laughter in your life sometimes. Like, that came right on time for me. Um, so here's my inspirational quote for the day. It is, during a, it is during our darkest moments that we must focus on the light. Mm, let me say that again. It is during our darkest moments that we must focus on the light. Aristotle Nasser said that, and he was absolutely right. I know sometimes it's hard for us to focus on the light. We're going through that darkness. All we see is darkness. Sometimes all we want to see is darkness. We just want to be in the dark. We want it to be blacked out. But when you focus on the light, and there is light. I know sometimes it don't seem like there's light at the end of the tunnel, but there is. I don't care what you're going through, what you're dealing with. There's always light, but you got to stay. You got to stay on the path. Here's the thing. If you stay on the path, you'll come out of the darkness. If you stop in the middle of the darkness, you will stay in the darkness. Let me say that again. If you stop in the middle of the dark space, you're going to stay there because it's dark. You got to keep pushing because there is light at the end of the tunnel and you got to focus on the light. You have to. I know there's a lot of stuff going on right now everywhere. A lot of darkness, right? But that's why I took the 30 seconds out for us to pray together. Because we focus on the light, we'll come out of the darkness. But if we stay in the dark, if we stop right dead smack in the middle of darkness, that's exactly where we stay. So I say to you, focus on the light. Focus to see that light. Know that there is a light at the end of that dark tunnel. It is. It is. That's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for being here. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you spent the last one hour with me, and I appreciate you so much. If you missed any episode of this show, please go to Good Morning with Ned and listen there. Share the show with your friends and families. I'm looking to grow it more. I'm going to have a QR code on the site where you can just go and scan it right from your phone and download the app. Here's the thing about the app. It won't take up space on your phone. So you know how some apps take up your memory and all that stuff? This app won't do that. So, And you'll be able to not ever miss an episode of the show. You'll be able to always listen live to the show and go back and listen to past shows. So be sure I'm going to put that up there sometime later on this week. So you can just go to Good Morning Gwinnett, scan the QR code, download the app right to your phone. It's going to give you some simple instructions to just follow those instructions. You'll be able to add the add the app right to your phone. All right? But thank you again for listening. I love you guys for listening. Appreciate you so much. I'll be back again tomorrow, 9 a.m., same time, same place. And until next time, guys, make it a great day. Bye, y'all. You've been listening to Good Morning Gwinnett. Make sure to tune in daily at 9 a.m. Eastern Time to find out what's happening around Gwinnett. If you miss an episode, go to www.goodmorninggwinnett.com to catch up. If you like this episode, go ahead and subscribe to the show now and share it with your friends.